this really is a special evening, as, as you're going to hear from me, uh, as Jerry tried to convey. It's not just special for Bill and Adelaide and, and my, myself to be with friends, and, and, and that always makes an evening special. To have someone like Dylan call you out is it, certainly gratifying the ambassador. Uh, it's this common cause that brought us here tonight, and, and I have somewhat the same connection uh, historically uh, that Jerry alluded to for herself and her family and, and so many others in this room. I actually knew John Gardner. Uh, I had the privilege of meeting John in 1971. Uh, my mentor was a gentleman named Ed Littlefield. I left the Stanford Business School and his classmate at Stanford years earlier had been John Gardner. And I met John a year after his formation of Common Cause. It was the infancy of my career and, and these two remarkable individuals at Littlefield and, and, and soon thereafter John Gardner changed my life and in very large part bring me here this evening. But it's these friends that are with me tonight. It's Anya Hoberger who is such a friend of, of uh, a Common Cause and brought me here tonight with the two Susans. It's these wonderful women and men that I've had the privilege of being in the media industry my, most of my entire career. And it, it's frankly you and the common cause, small c, small c, that brings us here tonight. Ed Littlefield, for me, I, I had a pretty hard scrabble life growing up, and I met this amazing individual who looked at a resume of manual labor, farm worker, merchant marine, shipyard worker, uh, a stint in the Army and said, uh, come work for me and I'll introduce you to the likes of Reginald Jones, of General Electric, and Bill Hewlett, and Dave Packard, and oh, by the way, my friend John Gardner. And it was that combination, that, that sense of unity around careers, around a country, uh, that really has informed everything I've accomplished in my life. It's also why in, in a common year, I could be named a founder of the Society of Jesus. It was the Jesuits who largely raised me, but also the Rabbinical College of America for work that I had done uh, around AIDS, malaria, uh, HIV in general, which was a common concern of the, the college. Uh, what stands out for me about Ed Littlefield uh, is this sense of responsibility that Jerry alluded to where CEOs, Republicans and Democrats alike, and Ed was a rock-ribbed Republican, John Gardner was a rock-ribbed Republican, uh, this sense of responsibility to this nation. And Ed Littlefield is the genuine architect of a, of a view that came forward in the early 1970s that CEOs in America had at once equal and concurrent responsibility to their employees, to their shareholders, to their communities, to their customers, and oh, by the way, this nation that we live in. And there wasn't a single one of these men that I knew and had the privilege of working with early in my career that would have ever have taken an action that was not in the best interest of his employees, nor in the best interest of this nation. And it was consistent with the fact that this amazing captain of industry that took me under his wing a man who was once a chair, chairman of and CEO of the largest natural resource company then in the world, made me his personal assistant while he sat on the board of, the, of Pan Am and Chrysler and General Electric, ran the Stanford Research Institute as its chair and chaired the business roundtable. Ed Littlefield would never have taken an action that was not in the best interest at once of his employees and his shareholders and he introduced me to John Gardner, who said the same thing. Oh, by the way, Ed, remember the nation. So when Reginald Jones, a couple of years later, went into the public domain and said that should be the mantra of this nation, it was such a wonderful web, such a wonderful tapestry of business and politics. And here are these two Republicans, uh, John Gardner, who went on to be a Secretary of Health and, and Human Services, then called HEW for Lyndon Johnson, uh, put Medicare and, 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 and the health care programs of this nation on their feet, led us through the infancy of, of federal education initiatives, 
and then left that administration over protest over the war and, and did it in such a dignified way. And I was, I was in the Army at the time, and I, I took great exception to what John Gardner did. I, I volunteered for the Army, and yet I understood the principle that caused him to stand up for his nation as he perceived it. So today when we desperately need strong hands at, at all tillers, whether they be the political tillers that Bill talked about with us this evening or the ambassador or the uh, uh, business tillers that have left us as, as the Susans have informed us, Susan Rubenstein, with more income inequality than at any time in the history of this nation with the reality that half of the nation's income is earned by three to five percent of wage earners, that there's been no real wage increase in this country for 90 percent of workers since 1967. Where is that magical tapestry that John William Gardner and Edmund Wattis Littlefield tried to weave together for 40 years to such enormous success? I find in John Gardner, a Marine Corps captain in the Second World War, a genuine hero. I find a, a leader, uh, he went on to lead Carnegie Corporation, and then as I said, at a quite young age, he became Secretary of Health and Human Services for, for President Lyndon Johnson. He would, he would die today to see a Supreme Court that vests in corporations the same political prerogative that we should have as individuals, but in an untold fashion. So we sit here tonight with limits on our capabilities, and, and uh, the corporations have almost none on theirs, thanks to Citizens United. <laughs> the early part of my career was on the West Coast. Many of us who are older remember a very prominent individual named Jesse Unruh, who was the Speaker of the State Assembly in California. Uh, he went on to be the State Treasurer. He, he was the architect and the author of the line that money is the mother's milk of politics. And it was that single phrase that informed John Gardner in, to start Common Cause. Common Cause, as we know firsthand, as we know firsthand in this, in this in gathering this evening, has been behind every single significant finance reform effort since its founding in 1970. Not the least of which was McCain-Feingold. And when this wonderful John Gardner passed in, in, in the year 2004, uh, 2002, I'm sorry, John passed in 2002 at the age of 89, McCain and Feingold paid heed to this 89-year-old rock of Gibraltar and the last time I saw John was at the memorial service for Ed Littlefield a few months earlier uh, at what's called Mem Chu at Stanford, the Memorial Church. And I watched one hero of mine lay in state, and I watched another walk in and place his hand on, on his friend's uh, casket. And I, I reminded myself what, how magical it could be, and that was all of 10 years ago. So here we sit. Uh, in, in the most perilous time that I can imagine in terms of campaign finance. If we don't put a cork in this dike, we will be subsumed by such a tsunami that not even the loquacious chords and, and, and words of Dylan Radigan will be able to save us. <laughs> so let, let me offer you two, two perspectives that I think we, we have to pay somewhat of attention to as we leave this evening. We're not going to get, Ambassador, the court that you wish us to have. We're not going to get it soon. So what we do need is full disclosure, and we need full transparency. And the instrument of that has to be the SEC, with the urging of the public pension and the fiduciary community of this country. It's the most instant. It, it, is, it is unequivocally the most instant solution. And they cannot hide behind these intermediary organizations. No more gifts to the Chamber of Commerce that mask where these gifts came from. So all direct funders and all intermediary funders must, under SEC rules, going for us, tell us where they put their monies. And, and we should decide as shareholders and citizens 
whether that remains in our best interests. This This privilege tonight that Adelaide has had and I've had in Bill is something that we will take, and I, I feel older Bill than you tonight, I just don't look, I guess I do look older. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, um, you know, it, it, just remember what, what John Gardner said to us, which was common cause. It was the most remarkable, nonpartisan, bipartisan, nation-oriented, citizen-oriented, employee-oriented endeavor to befall this nation in nearly a half a century. And that's why the three of us are so privileged to be with you tonight. Jerry, thank you from the bottom of my heart, my friends from the industry, and, and all of my friends from media, Anya, who helped us, the two Susans. Bill, congratulations to you, and Adelaide to you as well. My perfect. Thank you.